I get a lot of requests for videos that will feature recipes to cater to a specific diet or lifestyle. And I tend to shy away from those because I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist or a dietitian that can advise somebody in that area. But it is Crocktober and I am trying to branch out a little bit with my crock pot recipes. So I thought I would share some that I think might work with like a lower carb or sort of keto-ish lifestyle. I found this crock pot Tuscan sausage with spinach and sun-dried tomatoes from eatwell.com and I thought it would be a fun one to try out. I've never cooked whole sausage links in the slow cooker and then it's gonna make like a really delicious sauce that you can serve a variety of ways. I'm gonna make some changes to the original recipe. I'll leave this one linked in the description box below and show you what I'm doing. I have my multifunction slow cooker out. I've got it on the saute function right now and I want to just sear these sausages on each side for just one or two minutes on their own before I put the rest of the ingredients into the slow cooker. These are just mild Italian sausage links, one pound of them. There's five links, which works out perfect for my family because there's five of us. I'm gonna add just about a tablespoon or two of olive oil because I also want to drop in about a tablespoon of this garlic and I want it to saute for just about one minute or so to kind of make it fragrant. Now I'm gonna switch this over to the slow cook setting and I'm adding one cup of chicken broth. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a pinch of red pepper flake. You can leave this out if your family doesn't like heat. Mine does. Salt and pepper to taste. Won't need very much because the sausages are pretty salty. And then also some of these sun-dried tomatoes. I did not buy the ones that are in oil. I bought the dried ones. And I'm gonna use about half of this bag. I didn't have to slice them up because they're already sliced. Pop the lid on. I'm gonna let that cook on high for about three hours and the sausages should steam up beautifully. Another reason I tend to shy away from featuring recipes in this specific vein is because everybody's definition of low carb or what constitutes keto friendly is different. For my intents and purposes for this video, I decided just to choose recipes that do not call for pasta, rice, potatoes, bread, tortillas, those obvious starches, and really zone in on recipes that use mainly proteins and vegetables. My sausages have been cooking for around three hours. They are done, so I removed them and set them aside to rest. I'm gonna slice them up and add them back into the recipe here in just a few minutes. But first, I am going to stir in one cup of heavy cream, about two cups of fresh spinach, and about half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. I'm going to put the lid back on this and I'm gonna let it keep cooking on high just until the cheese is melted and the spinach you know, begins to um, wilt here in the sauce. And then I will add the sliced sausage back into the crock pot and let it just warm through with everything else again. And it'll be ready to serve with noodles, with rice, or for a low carb option, maybe with some cauliflower mashed potatoes. That's how I plan to plate it up. And I think it's gonna be really delicious. It smells amazing. I have already tried this. I think it's really, really good. I want you to try it and tell me what you think. It looks delicious. <laughs> smells good too. Yeah, it's great. It's really good. It's like a low carb, that's a mashed cauliflower. A little bit of uh, spice, good flavor. Yeah, from the Italian sausage. Man, I thought that was really good. It's a winner. You might notice that in this video, I'm not using specialty foods, you know, like diet compliant foods that have to be special ordered on the internet, like those very specific low carb noodles or keto friendly muffins or something like that. If I wanna follow that lifestyle, I probably need to learn not to eat noodles and muffins and zone in on the proteins and the veggies and the things that really make up that lifestyle. So I am using some rice cauliflower, some spaghetti squash. Those things are readily available in the grocery store they still pretty much are just veggies. But if I am wanting to eat a little lower carb, but my family is not, maybe I have picky eaters, I have kids in the household, what I would do is probably zone in on the proteins. I would get those proteins going in the slow cooker and then I would make the side dishes a la carte because I can have rice cauliflower or mashed cauliflower and the kids can have regular rice or mashed potatoes. I can make up some pasta for their dishes and then I can put my main entree on top of some spaghetti 
spaghetti squash. And the crock pot is such a great and easy way to cook different cuts of meat so that they are flavorful and tender. I like to cook chuck roast in the crock pot, whole chickens in the crock pot, a pork roast in the slow cooker, a salsa chicken, just chicken breast and salsa shredded up, use it in a variety of ways. I'll leave some of my favorite crock pot protein recipes linked in the description box below. And speaking of meats, if you are looking for high quality cuts of meat, Good Shop is sponsoring today's video. I have been delighted to be working with Good Shop for, for the past several months, and I've also ordered several boxes myself from them. And my husband and I have absolutely raved about the quality of the steaks from Good Shop. But there are so many other cuts of meat. There is something for everybody. In addition to lots of different cuts of 100% grass-fed beef, they offer wild-caught salmon. They offer shrimp. They offer free-range and organic chicken breast. They offer chicken drumsticks. They offer pork. They offer bacon. There's so much to choose from. Good Shop sources all of their proteins, their beef, their chicken, their fish, their shrimp, their pork from right here in the USA from American farms and fisheries. There are no antibiotics, no added hormones, only the good stuff, and they will ship it right to your doorstep. Right now, Good Shop is offering $120 off. When you visit the link in the description box below or you go to goodshop.com slash YouTube, you can use my code Mindy120 and it's going to give you $120 off across your first four boxes. Good Shop is so convinced that you are going to love them that they offer a 100% money back guarantee so you can basically try it risk-free. So if you want to give it a go, the link is in the description box or you can go to goodshop.com slash YouTube. My code is Mindy120. It's going to give you $120 off across your first four boxes. And thank you again to Good Shop for sponsoring today's video. Years ago, when my husband was kind of trying out this lifestyle, I discovered this kind of low carb or keto friendly version of taco soup for the crock pot. I will see if I can hunt down that recipe and leave it linked in the description box below because it is absolutely delicious. It basically zones in on the proteins and the veggies and leaves out the starches like beans and corn. But of course it's super versatile because people who are not following that plan can add like rice or tortilla chips to their bowls when the soup is done. That's sort of the concept I'm thinking about with this next recipe. Recipe. It's for a crock pot stuffed pepper soup. It is from the website Whole Lot of Yum. I'll leave it linked in the description box below and I'll show you how I'm making it today and give some ideas for how you can vary it according to the way different people may be eating in your household. I am using my slow cooker that has a saute function so that I can brown up one pound of ground beef and half an onion chopped all together and not even have to transfer it from the stove to the crock pot, but you certainly could do that. I have this really cool rotary chopper that I use sometimes for onions. Works like a charm. I think I got it on Amazon. If I did, I'll leave it linked in the description box below. I'm not going to drain this, you know, like use a paper towel and sop up some of the grease because this is pretty much the only fat that is going in this recipe and I really want that to flavor the soup. I'm switching the function to slow cook and now I am adding one teaspoon of garlic salt, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, pepper to taste, two teaspoons of Worcestershire, a couple teaspoons of minced garlic, two bell peppers chopped. I used one yellow bell pepper and one red bell pepper. We're not big fans of the green bell peppers, but I think any kind of bell pepper would do. One big can, that's the 14 ounce can of tomato sauce. It calls for two cans of diced tomatoes. I'm just gonna use one can of petite diced tomatoes and then one can of tomatoes with green chilies, AKA Rotel, to add a little bit of a kick to this. The recipe calls for three cups of broth. I'm only adding two because we kind of like our soups a little less brothy. You see chunks in there, it's just the bouillon because I tend to make my broth from bouillon. And I'm just gonna pop the lid on and let that cook on high for, for three to four hours, low for five to six, kind of your typical thing. Everything in there is cooked. It's just basically simmering together for flavor now. Actually, I guess the veggies aren't technically cooked, but you know what I mean. Everything that needs to cook is cooked. It's just gonna all simmer together and all those flavors are gonna be delicious and then we'll come back and finish it up. I have been smelling this simmering for the last few hours and I have to say that it smells Fantastic. I cannot wait to pour myself a bowl of this and dive in. I think it's gonna be really flavorful. 
I am eating this for lunch today with a little bit of cauliflower rice and some shredded cheddar cheese to finish it up. If I'm offering this to my kids, I'd probably just make regular rice for them. I might even have like some beans and some corn that I heat up that they can add to their bowls if that's something that they want to add. Maybe some crushed up tortilla chips. Just a few options for how you can vary the way that you serve this and sort of serve it buffet style so people can fix it according to their preferences. Okay, I just have to say that is tasty. I am not even following like a low carb lifestyle and I would not mind eating that for lunch anytime. <laughs> really, really delicious. Just simmering it for so long and letting all the flavors come together. So good. I really wanted to include some kind of chicken Alfredo recipe in this video. But every recipe I was coming across for a crock pot chicken Alfredo involved putting heavy cream in the slow cooker during the slow cooking process. And I tend to shy away from those recipes that add especially liquid dairy into the slow cooker. Like I'll add the cream cheese because it just softens throughout the cooking process and I can incorporate it. But things like milk, half and half, heavy cream, cottage cheese, cheese, I tend to stir that stuff in at the end. So I have come up with something that we're gonna try. I'm gonna try something different for kind of an Alfredo style chicken dish that you can put over pasta for other people in your house or I'm probably gonna have mine over spaghetti squash to make it more like a low carb version if that's something that you want. I am starting out with about one and a half to two pounds, probably close to two pounds of chicken breast in my slow cooker here. And I'm gonna add half a cup of this Parmesan garlic wing sauce. I found this one at Walmart just in the Great Value brand. They had some other brands there. I think they had like a Buffalo Wild Wings brand. I'm sure there are lots of others that you could substitute for this, but this is what I'm gonna use today. I only have a little bit of garlic left in this jar, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that too. So this is gonna be very garlicky, plus one cup of chicken broth. I'm also adding one block of cream cheese, and I diced this up into cubes, and I'm just gonna drop it kind of all over the slow cooker here. And then I'm gonna pop the lid on and let this cook on low. Until the chicken is done, you could do it on high as well, however long it takes for your chicken to cook in the slow cooker, and we'll come back and finish this up. The chicken has been cooking for about six hours on low, and I am actually just gonna use my hand mixer here to shred it all up right in the pot. By the way, I would not use this in my multifunction slow cooker. It would not work very well with um, that particular insert. Now I'm gonna stir in one bag of broccoli, and I did par cook this in the microwave. I just microwaved it for three minutes instead of the full time, which would have been six minutes. I just didn't want to put it in frozen because it would really take the temperature of my slow cooker down really quickly and it'd take it a while longer to come back up to temperature. About a cup of heavy cream and about a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. I'll put the lid back on. I need the cheese to melt and for everything to heat back through and then it will be ready to serve. I have a spaghetti squash roasting in the oven so I'm gonna plate that up for me and also probably for the husband because he likes it also. And I'll just make up some pasta for the kids so that they can have regular old pasta Alfredo and hubby and I can have the spaghetti squash which is actually how we eat pasta sauce a lot because we just like it even though we aren't following low carb, we just like it that way. I mean, I know it's not traditional Alfredo because of the addition of the wing sauce, but that is good. <laughs> that is really tasty. I do not even miss the pasta. Two thumbs up. One, two. Thank you again to Good Shop for sponsoring today's Crocktober low carb slow cooker recipes video. You can find them linked in the description box below. Check out one of these videos to watch next and I'll see you there.